Welcome to Bible Talk class. We are more than happy to have you once again to finalize our presentation on Acts of the Apostles and early Pauline Epistles. Our final presentation will focus on prison letters. And prison letters consist of Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. We begin with Ephesians. And the general perspective or the theme of this letter is unity in Christ Jesus. Let's look at the authorship. We are looking at the authorship, but before then, let's consider the structure. A message of praise to God, prayer, report, Jewish Gentile salvation and reconciliation, apostleship to the Gentiles, Paul's prayer for the readers, unity and disunity in the church, the old life and the new life, the family relationship, and spiritual battle. And so that's what we have as the structure. Now, we're looking at authorship of this letter. And as we usually do, we consider the external evidence and internal evidence. So we look at the external evidence. First, in Marcia's canon, the letter of Ephesians is called Laodiceans and Paul as the author. The Moratorian Canon also identifies Paul as the author. Clement of Rome, Hermas, Barnabas, Gidatus, Polycarp refer to it as a Pauline or, um, letter. Tertullian, Clement of Alexandria, and Origen all quote from this letter. And further, it is found in P46, the earliest Pauline manuscripts, normally dated around AD 200. And so the same evidence is quite strong. Um, now we look at the internal evidence. Here, Paul explicitly mentions his name in the letter as found or as usually done in other uh, letters of Paul. And when we read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, you get this impression there, and chapter 3, verse 1, 2. There are personal notes that indicate the author's close relationship with the audience. So when you read chapter 1, verse 15, verse 16, chapter 3, verse 1, Chapter 4, verse 1, you see how Paul relates to the audience in the letter to show that there is an existing relationship between the author and the audience. Now, the letter of Ephesians and the other Pauline writings share some literary features such as structure, salutation, thanksgiving, doctrinal exposition, moral appeal, final courtesies, and benediction, and also vocabulary. So, the, the structure and the vocabulary are two literary features that Paul uh, shares with, um, you know, that are found, that are in uh, the letter uh, to the Ephesians that are also uh, used or used in other Pauline um, writings. The theology of Ephesians is consistent with earlier Pauline writings. So his theology, uh, particularly on uh, salvation and how uh, believers come to Christ uh, through faith is also consistent with um, other Pauline letters. Now, we are looking at internal evidence and here against Pauline authorship. So the first internal evidence was for Pauline authorship. Now, the first argument is a historical argument. Here, it's, it's argued that Ephesians does not show any personal acquaintances with the audience. According to chapter 1, verse 1, verse 15, chapter 3, verse 4. Response, the phrase in Ephesus is not in the best manuscripts. Here the point is that if you look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, the phrase in Ephesus, you find that in, in this verse, in Ephesus, is not in the best manuscript, meaning that Paul did not intend to write directly to the church in Ephesus. And we'll discuss this one further. The next response we give is that when you read Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 9, you see Paul making reference to um, how unfit he is in the ministry or even to be called an apostle. And this idea is found in Ephesians 
chapter 3 verse 8 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 9. It tells you that the author was conscious of his, um, uh, you know, his, um, his, his qualification to become an apostle. And he said that I'm the least of all the apostles. I, I don't belong. I don't belong because of what I've done to the church. But by his grace, as an appointed as an apostle. And so this idea suggests that the author of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians should also be the author of uh, the letter to the Ephesians. The next argument is lingu linguistic argument. And this is argued that Ephesians uses 30 words, that is vocabulary, not used in other Pauline writings. So also the style. The style of Ephesians, that is in style of writing, if you, if you look at the sentences, they are quite long, long sentences, you know, um, unlike other Pauline uh, letters that we find short sentences. That's the first argument. That is, that is a linguistic argument. The second argument of the linguistic argument is the, that Ephesians shows dependence on Colossians. As 73 verses show identical semantical, uh, semantic structure, similarity in words. And so there are some uh, you know, words that are shared by Ephesians and Colossians. And the argument is that Ephesians uh, depends on Colossians because it seems that some words were borrowed from uh, Colossians. And so that is the argument. Now, let's see how we can respond to these uh, charges. One is that we see Galatians and Philippians having, let's say, 31 and 40 words unique to them respectively. So Galatians has 31 words that are unique to the letter. The same can be said of Philippians, having 40 words also unique to uh, Philippians. And so if, if you find that some words are unique to Ephesians and therefore Paul could not be the author, that argument is not strong because Galatians is accepted by many scholars that is Paul. And also, this letter also has some unique words. Also, the issue of stylistic, that is the long sentences in, in Ephesians, okay? The issue of stylistic differences is a question of author's use of amanuensis. If an author uses an amanuensis, let's say a secretary, who um, love to write, you know, long sentences, definitely you, you get this a, a challenge. And so, um, we should appreciate and uh, you know, allow the author the flexibility to engage any um, secretary that he, he, he you know he wants to engage. So in short, if Paul used an amanuensis different from um, you know amanuensis that was used to write romance, definitely you see some difference in terms of style. On dependence, both Ephesians and Colossians were sent to this to. Asia Minor, the same time, hence verbal similarity. When you read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 21 to 22, Colossians chapter 4, verses 7 to 8, you see and appreciate that these two letters were sent um, to the same geographical area, the same time. So it's possible that when the author was writing, Similar you know, vocabularies, similar ways of writing would have been employed to write the two letters. The same phenomenon is observed in the, in the Corinthian correspondences and the Thessalonian letters. We see that when Paul was writing 1 uh, Corinthians and 1 uh, Thessalonians, we see some similarities because he wrote these letters at the same time. In other words, 1 Corinthians were written uh, you know, the same time. Uh, the same with uh, first and second Thessalonians, and therefore you see some similarities in words and style. And so this is not unique um, to Ephesians and Colossians. It is only one verse that is identical to both Ephesians and Colossians. So even the similarity that uh, some have spotted um, yeah, between Ephesians and Colossians is only a, in just a verse, one verse, one verse. And in this verse, only seven or eight words uh, look alike. So we should not make too much of this uh, you know, similarity that is found in just a verse. The next argument is theology. 
It is argued that a fully mature theological themes such as universal church in Christ in Ephesus misses key Pauline theology as justification by faith or eschatology. In other words, why is it that Paul did not talk about justification by faith or end time event eschatology in, Eph in Ephesians if indeed he wrote the letter? And the response is that the situation or the need of the church determines the content of the letter. Always, you know, we stress this point that occasion, occasion, what made Paul write is what should determine uh, the content of the letter. Now we look at provenance. Where was Paul when he wrote? The traditional view is that Paul wrote this letter in Rome, or Roman prison, while others have identified Ephesus, Caesarea as place of writing. Now let's look at the some you know argument uh, to confirm what we 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 have as as a clear uh, possible place of writing. Now the Caesarea improvement. When you read you know um, Acts, the book of Acts, we hear that Paul was in prison in Caesarea. Now, if you look at Onesimus, the runaway slave, the one who was with uh, his master Philemon, uh, Philemon was based in uh, Colossae. Onesimus ran away from uh, Philemon, and so this Onesimus would not have access to Paul in Caesarean prison. Because in Caesarean prison, Paul was in prison in a very tight situation that nobody could have access to him. And therefore, when you read uh, Philemon um, verse 22, we appreciate how Onesimus managed to get access to Paul and you know, could easily frequent the, uh, the house where Paul was um, uh, kept. And so the Caesarean imprisonment cannot be a place where uh, you know, uh, be a place of uh, writing. The next one is efficient imprisonment. Onesimus would have been easily spotted in Ephesus, a nearby city of Colossae. It was just few hours, you know, to travel from Colossae to uh, Ephesus. And therefore, anybody could have spotted uh, Onesimus and have brought Onesimus back to his master. And therefore, one can appreciate that. Onesimus had to run far away from Colossae, a place that the master I mean, would not you know, get any opportunity to uh, take him back. So the Roman imprisonment uh, looks more likely because Luke's presence with Paul in Rome, Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, Philemon verse 24, uh, you know, suggests and indicate that Luke was with uh, Paul in Rome. And the hope of release from prison make Burum as a more likely place of writing. In the Caesarean imprisonment, there was no hope of release. There was no hope of release. And that is clear in, in the book of Acts. But in the Roman imprisonment, when you read Acts chapter 28, you see that possibility, verses 28 to 30, that uh, indeed uh, Paul had that flexibility and there was this hope. That he was going to release. In fact, when you read Philemon verse 22 or so, you get an idea of this uh, hope of release uh, being um, uh, presented. And that it's possible that Paul was in Rome when he wrote this letter. Um, since Paul mentioned Tychicus as the bearer of the letters of Ephesians and Colossians, he might have written the two from the same place, the same place. And that also suggests that uh, indeed uh, Paul was in Rome, as we read from Ephesians chapter, chapter 6, verses 21, 22, Colossians chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. It is possible that Paul wrote from Rome while on house arrest, as we have indicated um, in Acts chapter 28, verse uh, 16 in particular, you get this idea. But we look at the Caesarean imprisonment or the Ephesian imprisonment, we don't get any clue that. Paul had any chance of, uh, you know, being released. Uh, but for Rome, that is very clear in his writings, as we read uh, from these prison letters we have mentioned. Date of writing. In writing the official letter, Paul does not indicate any hope of release as he did in Philippians chapter 1, verses 23 to 27, and Philemon, verse uh, 22. 
So when he was writing the letter to the Ephesians, he did not indicate that hope of release. But when he was writing Philippians, he indicated that. That should indicate or suggest that um, uh, the, the date for writing Ephesians should be a bit uh, different from the date that he wrote uh, um, probably Philippians and Philemon. This suggests that the official letter was written before Paul got any sign of release. But when I was writing Philippians, he had a sign of release. But when, um, you know, we see in what we see in Ephesians, we don't get that information. So since Paul was in prison in Rome in AD 59, uh, 50 or 62, he would have written the Ephesian letter in early 60, destination. Church tradition holds that Ephesus was the destination of the letter. However, in Ephesus, the phrase in, Ephes in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 is not found in the best manuscript. The best manuscript, we are referring to P46, the earliest Pauline manuscripts, um, dated around AD 200. Um, uh, Sinaiticus, um, Vaticanus, and other you know, uh, uh, manuscripts that are quite early. And therefore, it is, it is quite difficult to really, uh, you know, Establish that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. Marcion calls this letter the letter to the Laodiceans because in Colossians chapter 4, verse 16, Paul mentions that when the letter to the Colossians um, had been read, um, he wanted the letter to be forwarded to the church in Laodicea so that the church in Laodicea also would forward uh, this to, uh, to them, you know, more or less circulate the letters. Now, and so that has, that actually informed Marcion to identify this letter, the letter to the Ephesians, as we, we, we call it today, as the letter to the Laodiceans. While Tertullian and Ephraim do not mention the destination or the audience, and there's no manuscript supporting Marcion's designation, there's no manuscript to indicate that this letter was first written to the Laodiceans. Besides, the author does not indicate personal knowledge of the audience and does not deal with personal problems. Usually when Paul is writing to a particular church, he sometimes mentions some names, sometimes also, you know, relate to some personal um, incidences, um, events, and relate to some people and address them as you, and, you know, referring to certain people that uh, he want to pay particular attention to. In this letter, we don't find uh, this style of, of writing. Some hold that the Ephesian letter was meant to introduce the Pauline writings. Those who hold this view typically deny Pauline authorship. However, if Pauline authorship is established, this view becomes invalid. The, this point here is that some believe this letter was written by someone to introduce other Pauline writings and that this letter was not written by Paul. That's the argument. What is clear is that the letter was sent to a church in the Asia Minor, as Ephesians chapter 6, verses 21 to 22 uh, suggests. Tychicus, traveling from Rome to Asia Minor, will stop at Ephesus, because if we're traveling from Rome or from any parts of you know, uh, uh, the West, you know, the Western world, from, from Corinth, from Rome, from Spain, and we're coming to Asia Minor, the first point of um, entry was Ephesus. And so Tychicus traveling from Rome to Asia Minor would stop at Ephesus and share the letter with churches in that province, Asia Minor province. Since Ephesus was the departure point for the circulation of the letter, the later recipient of the copies in the province may have inserted in Ephesus Hence, a circular letter. So, this letter was meant to be a circular letter, meant to be shared among the churches in Asia Minor. Please share this letter circularly. So, Paul did not intend to send this letter to a particular church. That's why he was not he was not all that personal in his uh, you know uh, um, dealing with issues in the letter. So, this was a circular letter, and therefore was not intended for. Um, the church in Ephesus. Occasion and purpose. What happened that made Paul write? And what was the purpose for writing? While in Roman prison, 
Paul may have thought of sending a letter to the churches in Asia Minor to encourage the believers in the faith in Christ. News reached him about false teaching in Colossae. As he wrote to address the church in Colossae, he wrote also a general letter to safeguard the faith of the believers in Asia Minor. In Rome, Paul was in house arrest and he received news that false teaching was raging in Colossae. And Colossae was a big city and quite influential. And he felt that he had to write a general letter to safeguard or to reassure people of the faith in Christ Jesus alone as the only means to be saved. And that's why um, he wrote this letter. Even though he wrote, he wrote a letter to the church in Colossae addressing the specific issue, yet he had to write a general letter to prepare and protect the surrounding churches of uh, the church in Colossae to also uh, be wary and to uh, you know prepare their minds and to confirm their faith in the faith that they have been brought in. Paul wrote a reflective theology, so that's the purpose. He wrote a, a reflective theology on the love and the unity that should exist in the church. If the church is one, uh, uh, you know, in, in teaching, no one can separate them. In recent studies on Ephesians, the following issues have been, uh, you know, uh, engaging scholars. Now, authorship is one, the relationship between Colossians and Ephesians. Uh, two, the influence of Gnosticism. Three, the church, the, the theology of church. Is four, eschatology. Is five. So, that is it for um, the recent studies. We look at theological themes in this letter. The first theme that stands out is prayer and worship. And here, thanksgiving and prayers are directed to God for His grace bestowed on believers. Jewish or Jews and Gentiles in the church. Paul emphasizes the relationship between Jews and Gentiles made possible through the cross. And that's one theme that runs, uh, you know, in this uh, book very consistently. And then, principalities and powers, the Lordship of Christ. The supremacy of Jesus over the principalities and powers is emphasized to assure believers to oppose them through Jesus' help. This theme also is carefully uh, articulated in the book. The Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, the revelation of God's mystery occurred. God sealed his people and believers are strengthened. The Spirit is active in the church because the church has one Spirit. And so that is, is the role of the Holy Spirit in the letter to the Ephesians as we have it today. So we now move on to Colossians. So thank you very much for joining us to go through um, the letter to the Ephesians. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation and you share with your friends. If you are yet to subscribe, please subscribe and be a member of Bible Talk Class. Thank you very much. And let's move on to the letter to the Colossians. This is given to all who believe. Behold, I come quickly, my Lord, to receive. Hold fast till I come, the danger is great. Sleep not as do others, be watchful and brave.